exciting times are ahead. Alongside SpaceX's rockets, new contenders like New Glenn, Vulcan, and Rocket Lab's upcoming Neutron rocket are set to join the space race next year, bringing fresh competition to the industry and possibly even giving SpaceX a worthy rival. Meanwhile, SpaceX is making significant contributions to the ISS with a new resupply mission and achieving a key milestone in the process. However, safety remains a priority, as NASA has recently raised some concerns regarding SpaceX's vehicles. Let's dive into all of this on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Rocket Lab has quickly risen as one of the most active companies in the U.S. aerospace sector, second only to SpaceX. Their success has largely been driven by the Electron rocket, which recently received the milestone of 10 launches in a single year. An impressive feat compared to the slower progress seen from ULA and Blue Origin. However, as a small lift vehicle, Electron isn't enough for Rocket Lab to truly compete with the industry's major players. To bridge this gap, Rocket Lab is developing Neutron, a medium lift launch vehicle slated for its first launch next year. This new rocket positions Rocket Lab to participate in the U.S. Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program. Currently, SpaceX, ULA, and Blue Origin hold contracts for NSSL Phase 3 Lane 1. Rocket Lab aims to enter the next phase of this program with Neutron thanks to the U.S. Space Force's interest in expanding competition. The program's Indefinite Delivery Indefinite Quantity, or IDIQ, structure is designed to welcome additional companies to challenge existing contractors. And CEO Peter Beck is optimistic about Rocket Lab's prospects, stating, We're excited to bid this time around for NSSL Lane 1, and we think Neutron is a really good vehicle for it. According to NSSL requirements, participants for Lane 1 must be launch ready by December of 2025. Confident about meeting this timeline, Beck also shared that Rocket Lab targets Neutron's first flight by mid-2025, keeping them on track to join the U.S. Space Force's program and expand their role in national security missions. With Rocket Lab's Neutron expected to launch next year, we could see a promising new competitor enter the market, aiming to challenge SpaceX's dominance. Currently, although SpaceX has fewer flights under Phase 2 of the U.S. Space Force's NSSL program than ULA, it is steadily increasing its market share thanks to faster and more efficient launches. In fact, SpaceX has already secured a substantial $733.6 million U.S. dollar allocation for the Phase 3 budget, underscoring their leadership in launch capability. Meanwhile, there's little indication that ULA or Blue Origin can rival SpaceX's current trajectory. Rocket Lab's ambitions are bold, yet their confidence is grounded in Neutron's unique strengths. The rocket's production leverages extensive 3D printing, which not only minimizes manufacturing issues but also speeds up production. Neutron also utilizes lightweight carbon fiber instead of stainless steel, which, while less durable for re-entry than SpaceX's Starship, enhances thrust-to-mass efficiency. Another innovation lies in Neutron's fairing design, which is attached to the rocket and partially opens to deploy payloads. This reusable fairing setup can reduce both refurbishment time and costs unlike the Falcon rockets where the fairing is discarded. Progress on Neutron has also been rapid. Introduced just three years ago, Rocket Lab completed the first successful test of its Archimedes engine in August. Their development pace is striking compared to New Glenn and Vulcan, which have faced considerable delays. Additionally, Neutron's estimated development cost of 250 to 300 million US dollars is significantly lower than other medium and heavy lift rockets, adding to its appeal as a cost-effective option in the competitive space launch market. While Rocket Lab's Neutron can't yet compete with SpaceX rockets in terms of capability, it brings fresh competition to the market, perhaps more so than Blue Origin or ULA. With its innovative design and rapid development, Neutron might outpace these two companies if it remains on track. What do you think? Let me know with a yes or no in the comments section and feel free to explain. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to keep up with SpaceX's development journey. Until the groundbreaking refueling mission, SpaceX continues to assert its dominance across a variety of military, governmental, and ISS-related operations. 
Following the success of the Crew-9 mission in September, SpaceX recently launched the CRS-31 cargo mission to the International Space Station. Lifting off at 929 EDT from Launch Complex 39 in Florida, CRS-31 carried a substantial payload of 6,000 pounds, including essential cargo, food supplies, and scientific experiments for the crew aboard the ISS. This mission reflects SpaceX's ongoing commitment to reliably support and sustain operations on the station. The Dragon capsule for CRS-31 is set to arrive at the ISS approximately 13 hours after launch, docking at the Harmony Module's forward port, now available following Crew Dragon's relocation to a different docking port. CRS-31 will remain connected to the ISS for about a month, after which it will return to Earth with a planned splashdown off Florida's coast, bringing back valuable experimental results and other cargo. A significant part of CRS-31's success lies in its booster B-1083, which achieved its fifth successful landing at Landing Zone 1, or LZ-1. This marks SpaceX's 362nd overall booster recovery and the 41st landing specifically at LZ-1. B-1083's service history is notable, with missions such as Crew-8 and Polaris Dawn under its belt, demonstrating SpaceX's growing reliability and expertise in reusable launch technology. This 31st dedicated cargo mission to the ISS is one of many that underscores SpaceX's pivotal role in station support. Alongside its achievements in uncrewed resupply missions, SpaceX has completed 10 crewed missions under NASA's Commercial Crew Program, further solidifying its influence in the broader spaceflight landscape. By contrast, Boeing's Starliner, originally intended as an alternative crew transport vehicle, is still navigating technical setbacks. To bolster its relevance in ISS logistics, Boeing is also exploring options for Starliner to perform cargo missions. However, with SpaceX's Dragon firmly established as the workhorse for ISS resupply, the market window for Starliner may be narrowing, putting additional pressure on Boeing to meet its upcoming timelines. The CRS-31 mission also celebrated an important milestone for SpaceX, its 400th successful Falcon rocket launch. SpaceX shared this achievement on X, Posting, Falcon 9 launches Dragon to the space station, completing our 400th successful Falcon launch. This landmark launch reinforces the enduring success of the Falcon rocket series and establishes a strong foundation for future goals. SpaceX aims to reach an ambitious target of 400 Falcon 9 launches and up to 148 launches this year alone, underscoring the tremendous growth and operational efficiency of its launch program. Each mission and milestone reflects SpaceX's relentless momentum as it continues to shape the future of space exploration and transportation. While SpaceX's launch cadence is accelerating, safety remains a top priority, particularly following recent incidents. During the October 31st meeting of the Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, or ASAP, Kent Rominger, former astronaut and committee member, highlighted recent issues with Falcon 9 and Dragon, issuing cautions as SpaceX ramps up launch operations. Issues cited include a second stage problem in July, which led to a two-week investigation and suspension, a booster landing failure in August causing a brief delay, and an engine issue with Falcon's second stage during the Crew-9 mission in September. As SpaceX continues to set industry standards, these reminders serve to balance progress with vigilance, ensuring reliability even as the company reaches new heights in space exploration. Reflecting on recent issues, Rominger emphasized the importance of meticulous attention to detail as hardware ages and operational pace intensifies. He stated, when you look at these recent incidents over the last handful of weeks, it does lead one to say that it's apparent that operating safely requires significant attention to detail as hardware ages and the pace of operations increases. Both NASA and SpaceX need to maintain focus on safe Crew Dragon operations and not take any normal operations for granted. Rominger advised that both organizations guard against letting the high pace of operations from clouding their judgment to ensure the appropriate level of attention to detail and appropriate time and resources are dedicated to thoroughly understand the root cause and implement corrective actions. This caution is reasonable given Falcon 9's recent challenges, experiencing three consecutive issues over three months. While none of these affected mission objectives, they underscore the need for vigilance, especially with crewed missions. As the leading launch provider, SpaceX must maintain rigorous standards. Rominger also cited a minor parachute deployment delay on Crew-8's Dragon. 
where one of the four parachutes opened more slowly than the others. Although this did not cause any issues, it warrants attention. However, he commended SpaceX's plan to land Dragon on the West Coast, which would allow better management of Dragon's trunk and help mitigate space debris. Warnings are crucial, particularly when a company like SpaceX, accustomed to long stretches of flawless operation, encounters several issues in rapid succession. SpaceX has consistently shown an ability to quickly identify and rectify problems, in contrast to companies that might require years to resolve similar issues. This resilience and proactive approach makes SpaceX a pivotal player in the future of U.S. aerospace. As they continue to balance safety and reliability with rapid advancement, SpaceX is positioned to maintain its leadership in the industry. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.